Okay, so we're just finishing up the last video where we're uh, calculating this uh, uh, truth value of this longer statement of three letters, and therefore it has eight rows. So we figured out the, the uh, antecedent of the conditional, which is the main operator. So now let's go work on the consequent inside the bracket. So we have H or T. And if you look over here, we have H or T. Right? You could write all of the H's and all the T's first so you don't get confused if you want. I'm going to skip that step since I'm using paint. <laughs> okay. So, true or true? It's true. True or false? It's true. In fact, there's a shortcut, right? And you see it in the shortcut. Oh, is, uh, it's only false if both are false. So I could just find where they're both false. And then I'm false. And then uh, everything else will be true. So there we go. We figured it out, and then so these will be true. These are horrible all lines. <laughs> okay. Okay. So H or T is true, and uh, that line. Okay. Then we have ends. Now you can see the ends are doubled. Um, if you want, you could write them in. Just transfer them over like this, just to make sure you're not going to make a silly mistake when you're looking back to the left. Okay. And remember, all the ends again are double trues and double falses. It's real easy just to make a mistake somewhere when you're doing these longer truth tables. Like if I didn't draw a line for the rows, sometimes you get the rows confused or what have you. Um, and there's other types of mistakes. My T's might look like an F or whatever. So take your time. And then you can see we have this conditional. If true, then true, true, then true. True, then false. That's when it's false, right? It's the only time it's false. True, then false. It's the only time it's false. And uh, true than false is false. Everything else then will be true for that conditional. Fill them in. All right. So we've done all the major work. We just want to figure out the main operator now. And the main operator is this horseshoe. So we have. I'm going to circle these because there's so many trues or falses. I might mix them up. That's the antecedent of the main operator conditional. And over here, this would be the consequent value of the main operator conditional. Oops, really messy. Okay. Okay, so we got true, then true, true, then true. It's only false if um, we have a true and false. We have false and false, false and false, true and true, true and true, false and false, true and true. So there's no tr if true then false. So all of these are trues all the way down. Right? These are all trues, and you can write it in yourself. No, trust me. All right, check it yourself. So this statement, this whole statement, is always true no matter what the truth values of H, N, and T are. And therefore, this is called a tautology. A tautology is always true, like all bachelors are unmarried. So there you have it. All right, let's do one more type of problem. Uh, let's see, let's close this. And bye bye. Okay. Now, in your book, they'll have a problem like this. Compare these two statements, F and M, and it's not the case that F or M. And tell me whether these statements are consistent, or inconsistent, or contradictory, or equivalent. So you got to, um, in your book, learn what those words mean. Equivalence, when they have the same truth values on each line of their uh, truth table. Contradictory is when they always have opposite truth values. Consistent is when there's at least one line under the main operator where all the truth values are true. And inconsistent is when there's no line under the main operators where all the truth values are true. Okay, now maybe um, that doesn't make much sense yet. So the first thing to do is just to mechanically draw two truth tables, one for each of the statements that you're comparing. So I have F and M, and we have F and M, so remember, we go alternating true and falses with the letter to the far right, and it doesn't matter, matter if you put the F or the M on this far right, it doesn't matter what order the letters are, you're still going to get all the same thing in the end. Okay, and then we have double trues, right? True. True, false, and false. A lot of shortcuts you can do that you might be comfortable doing now. And then F and M is true when both are true. So we have true, false, false, and false. So that's
that's the first statement. The first statement is a contingent statement with one possible true and three possible false. Now the second statement, I would draw a truth table for it too. Okay, but notice we're using the same letters over here. So I can just, you know, um, I already have that left side set up, so I can just extend the rows like this. They're not very straight, are they? <laughs> okay. Um, and so we have F or M is always uh, true unless both are false. And we see F and M are both false over here on the bottom. So the OR is going to be false on the bottom. Okay. And then we have true or false, which would be true. And then false or true, which would be true. And then true or true, which would be true. But the main operator for this statement is the not. It's not the case that F or M. So we just reverse what we have on the right here. That's false. 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 And true. Okay. So let's compare the two statements now. Right? The, this statement has these truth values for these possible combinations. And the same row, these, these, this statement has these truth values. So, when this one's true, this one's false. When this one's false, this one's false. When this one's false, this one's false. When this one's false, this one's true. So, um, there is, it's interesting here, let's see, this is, uh, we've compared the two. They don't always have opposite truth values. Like, when this one's true, this one's false. But when this one's false, this one's false. So they're not contradictory. Okay, so I can rule that out. Um, now, is there a line where all of the where both truth values are true? Well, I don't see one. See, this one's true, false, 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 true. So they're not consistent statements. Okay, because they are not both true at the same time, with the same values. So we can say that these are um, inconsistent. Um, statements. So F and M is inconsistent. It's not the case that F or M because they're never both true. And um, so they're not contradictory. They're not logically equivalent because if they were logically equivalent we would have true, true, false, 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 true, true. They would have the same truth values. So we say these two statements are inconsistent. Now, you want to think through those vocab words in your book, you know, consistency, inconsistency. Um, but something is, uh, again, consistent when there's one line in which both are true. Um, if I say I'm wearing a shirt, is true. And uh, as is Austin is the capital of Texas. These two statements are consistent because there's a line in which both are true. I'm wearing a blue shirt. And uh, Austin is the capital of Texas. However, I could be shirtless, in which case they would not both be true. So they're not logically equivalent, but they are consistent statements. Okay, so <coughs> it's okay if you're a little confused there, but when you see when you see a question asking for a comparison, just do truth tables for both, and then compare the um, final truth values of both. And again, if they're always um, if, if none of them are both true, then the statements are inconsistent, right? If they always have opposite truth values, they're contradictory, and so on.